Gail Saunders here with Jacob Fulkerson, the boys from fourthandjohn.com. And, uh, you know, we, we wake up, uh, you know, to some, the, the, the timeline on Twitter is a little bit of fire this morning. Uh, thanks to a gentleman by the name of Phil Mackey. Uh, right. <laughs> He, he he works with ESPN, uh, 1500 ESPN's Mackie and Judd show. Uh, and we're going to play a little audio for you to get you a little fired up as well. Take a listen. That's right. That's what's coming, Vikings. That's right. That's what's coming. We might not beat you, but we're going to beat up yes. your fan base that dares to show up. It's an amazing inferiority complex. I mean, the, the Philadelphia inferiority complex, It's it's thick. It's palpable. It's... Boston and New York Envy at its peak. Even their radio hosts are trying to be Mad Dog Russo. Oh, what's going on, Philadelphia? I mean, seriously. You know what? I want you're not, Such, you're not Chris Russo. I want Such to start GL just like that today. <laughs> Ooh, That's what I want. What's going on, GLers? <laughs> That's what I want. Let's talk right wing <laughs> Social topics. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can I rant How for a good minute? Would that be? Can I rant for a minute? One thing I'll say about Minnesota sports fans: we're pretty self-aware. Would you agree? Like we're we know where our teams stand. We know it's been a bad run lately. Uh, we're not delusional. We don't thump our chests for titles that were won fifty years ago. Like we're we're self aware in that we're pretty embarrassed by the state of Minnesota sports in general in the last twenty five years. Is that fair to say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's definitely fair. Philadelphia fans, on the other hand, if I could create a Ross Perot like chart of bravado versus actual success of Philadelphia sports teams and compare it to like Boston and New York, the gap is pretty embarrassing. The, the lack of self awareness is pretty embarrassing. Outside of one World Series win by the Phillies 10 years ago, Philadelphia hasn't been championship relevant in decades. Yet they chirp like Patriots fans, like Yankees fans. Dwight Eisenhower was the president of the United States the last time the Eagles won a championship. But if you listen to their fans talk about swagger and talk about you come into our stadium and we'll kick your ass Mm -hmm. and we're going to make... You guys, hello, the Vikings actually have... Ten more division titles than you since they became a franchise. The Vikings have won the NFC more often than you since they became a franchise. They have more playoff appearances. They have more Hall of Famers. And yet, we're self-aware the Vikings have this pretty large missing thing. Now, if you are not fired up after listening to that, I don't know what I don't know what it takes. But Jacob, how are you how are you feeling about that audio right there? It's so disrespectful, man. Like, you can't come at fans that you don't even know, people you don't understand. If there's anyone in the NFL that is self-aware, it's got to be the <laughs> Eagles fan. And for Phil Mackey to go on this tangent saying that we have no self-awareness, um, we have an inferiority complex, I, that's something else I really don't get because the last time the Vikings were relevant, Win like nobody's talking about the Vikings being a powerhouse football team. It's just incredibly disrespectful for. Include here's the thing, before before the playoffs had even started, going into week what was it thirteen, against against the Rams, had Carson Wentz not got injured, who would be talking about the Vikings, in the national media. That's my question, you Gail. There's there is no one that would be talking about the Vikings right now. It would be a foregone yeah. conclusion. The Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. We don't have to talk about it. Now that Nick Foles is in, hey, the Eagles fans, they have an inferiority complex. I mean, it's just disrespectful, man. This team has been so good all year. The top of the NFC all year. There's no reason to talk about them like that. Well, I mean, I think you think about Philadelphia in in, uh, a nutshell all season long. The Eagles have been disrespected from the start of the season to the middle of the season to the end of the season, yep. and now into the playoffs. So if the consistency level of disrespect has been pretty uh, consistent. It, yeah. uh, but, you know, <laughs> you know, now that we're here, um, you know, I think, you know, an outsider like Phil Mackey doesn't have the understanding of this fan base, nor does he probably follow Eagles Twitter or Eagle, Eagles, uh, you know, news that closely because you, you would know that it's like, 
it's like one of those Marvel movies when you know the every, you know the good guys are coming against against each other because our own fan base rips our own fan base. So we are super yeah. aware of how you know you know good or bad our team is, how good or bad our backup you know uh, players are, or a backup guard, or you yeah. know a guy who. If he has a you know poor couple games, the Eagle fans are the first people that will call out their own team, right? Regardless of not having a, a, a Super Bowl ring, um, yo, you're we are very self. They're one we're, of them. You they, know, they don't have a Super Bowl ring, and I know right. that they brought it up, and I understand that they, they're part of us. They're they're one of the one of the few pe- one of the few teams that want to get that ring. But the self awareness thing, yeah, you have no idea what you're talking about, man. Like yeah. this, these people go at each other's throats all season long and i was there during the chip kelly era i know exactly what was going on during the chip kelly era nobody wanted chip kelly there nobody wanted sam bradford everybody believed in nick Foles. nobody wanted nick Foles gone and the trade happened the shit just went it went awol like everything was going the wrong way and everybody knew that it was a shit storm doug peterson comes in calms down the locker room a little bit they draft a a franchise quarterback nobody knew he was going to start and then he comes in after the trade to the Vikings, and he lights it up for the first four games. And then after that, it's history. It's the way it is. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole inferior, inferiority complex, I think, in, in, a, like, in a sense, I, you know, Eagles fan base, if someone says something bad about Philadelphia, it doesn't matter if you've been fighting with somebody on Twitter, an Eagles fan or whatever. Everyone rallies around the troops. Like right. if something, somebody sees something that's out of out of line, you see a target, at, you go hit it. That's the way I it think is. This, some some blogger, I think I forget uh, she was. I don't know if she was from New York City or someone. A blogger made a, a comment about you know Philadelphia, the city in a whole, and everybody went at them. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. this this city comes together. We did it with Colin Coward. Colin yeah. Coward did this a few months ago, and he did it this week. Yeah, it's, I mean, you, you got to protect your own. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I mean, you know, the, the level of disrespect is there, um, but obviously, as an Eagle fan, you know that's that's why you know a, a phrase like "We all we got, we all we need" resonates with us. The underdog resonates with us because we understand that we've been doubted. You know, like like when we're talking about the playoff picture, you know, this, you know, this, you know, everybody is, you know, overlooking us. But, you know, you look at this playoff picture in a whole teams right. that were supposed to make the playoffs, you know, you know, oh, we'll get wins in the playoffs. We'll start yeah. with the Chiefs. We're supposed to beat the Titans. Uh, let's see the the Jaguars, you know, they, they were not supposed to win. They were not supposed to beat the Steelers. But here we are. Uh, let's see. You know, the Eagles were not supposed to beat the Falcons. But here we are. Uh, the Saints, you know, going into the Vikings. The Saints just were not supposed to beat the Vikings. But as you know, it came down to that last minute play with Stephon Diggs. Right. Yep. So they could have easily lost that. So, you know, that is why the game has to be played. And now talking about the game that has to be played, the NFC title championship Jacob uh, what's your prediction on the game well I said it to Ryan earlier he posted a tweet uh, talking about uh, you know give me your predictions uh, tell me what you think is going to happen the way I see it uh, it is going to be a good game they're both fantastic teams I mean I'm not because of Phil Mackey and what he said I mean that's just adding more to the fire you know do, do what you gotta do but um the way I see it, I think that it comes down to the quarterback play. Uh, whoever plays better, whoever limits their mistakes, uh, it's going to come down to whoever plays well and the quarterbacks. Like, uh, And the way I see it, I think Nick Foles is better than Case Keenum. Um, I think he's Ooh. had to been, he's been asked to do more. Um, and he also hasn't had the full season to rally behind his team. So I think he's got the chemistry now. I think we move on. To Minnesota, I think we play the Patriots in the Super Bowl, and the score is going to be 27 <laughs> to 24, Philadelphia. 
27 24 uh like in my last video with uh braxton i have the eagles at 20 to 17 Ooh. i think uh like i said it's, it's going to be a defensive battle on the field i feel yeah. like whatever team you know whoever's quarterback or you know running game steps up that's going to be the x factor uh, but I, I do believe the biggest mismatch is our defensive line versus their offensive line uh, you know, their defensive line goes about, you know, maybe five deep. We go about eight deep, uh, and we have a nice little rotation. Uh, I really feel like they haven't seen pressure like we bring. Uh, but, yeah, 20, 20 to 17 Eagles. Uh, but I, I think that's all from us. You know, I think yeah. uh, it's going to be a, a great game tomorrow. I think uh, Eagle fans got to be proud of getting here all the adversity that we've seen this season, you got to be proud just, you know, getting to this moment. And I think yep. we have a, a a team that's ready and willing to uh, shock the world, as they say. Any last words, Jacob? Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to the Good Morning Football team and Kyle Brandt uh, showing tremendous support for the 4th and John podcast, coming to the F1 parking lot. Uh, yep. Just incredible that we, you know, get our exposure on television. It's just been great. Enjoy watching him go on his diatribes yeah. on, on live TV, pulling out the yeah. poodle mask, doing his thing. Yeah. He he knows what he's talking about. Like he 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 has a passion for the for the Philadelphia Eagles, I can tell. And he's doing the work. It, yeah, he's doing a great job. You I can, love you can tell you, you can tell he research. It's funny cuz uh he was walking in the in the parking lot and I'm sitting there you know right by the uh, NFL Network setup. But, you know, people on Twitter told him to come to 4th and John because he was looking to crash the tailgate. So yeah. that's, thank you, Eagles Twitter, for directing was, Kyle yeah, Brandt to our tailgate. So he's walking through the parking lot, and I, I see him. And I'm like, dude. I was like, Kyle, what's up, man? Uh, n- name's Gail. It's nice to meet you, man. I, you know, you really were bringing the heat last week. Some of your hot takes were pretty, pretty dope. And, he, and he's like, oh, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. He's like, uh, I got a quick question for you. I, I'm looking for fourth and John. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, dude, dude you this are is fourth and John. <laughs> I am. I am fourth and John. Yeah. I'm a part of fourth and John. I'm like, our crew, our, our whole crew, our tailgate is over here. So uh, I bring him over, introduce him to E. He's got the Pope hat. And I'm yeah. like, I was like, uh, E, we got a uh, Kyle Brink here. Um, he wants to check out a he wants to check out a baptism, so Kyle Brant's with his brother and his uh, friend, and then I'm like, "Yo, you guys want some beer?" They're like, "Yeah, yeah." So we're sitting there drinking with them, and then uh, they 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 check out a uh, a beer bomb baptism uh, by your our boy uh, E Rock. Uh, so I mean, it was, they were very happy, and they, they ended up uh, putting putting the, sh- the photo on on uh, on NFL Network. Gave us a nice yeah. little shout out um, on their Good Morning Football show. And then he gave us another shout out uh, when he was on with uh, Michael Barkan. So yeah. big shout out to Kyle Brandt and good shout out to media that actually does their homework. Um, it's very uh, you can pick the pick the low hanging fruit um, stuff for reporters who don't really do their research. Yeah, on top but of think- that, we've got a few people that I personally didn't expect their prediction on the on the football game. Uh, you've got Skip and Shane undisputed on FS1. Both of them are picking the Philadelphia Eagles to win the game this weekend. Hey, that's a that's a first. I mean, last yeah. week we had the bandwagoners going for Atlanta. Cool. Now Shannon Sharp has hopped on the Philly bandwagon. Cool. We're going to go to Minnesota, do our thing, get it done, beat them, move on to the Super Bowl, and hey, guys, oh, look at you. Guys, yeah. the one. We got okay. this. Okay. Jacob dropping the hot bombs this morning. But uh, that's all for me, Gail Saunders, uh, Jacob Fulkerson. Where, where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me at the J Fulkerson. It's T-H-E-J, and then my last name. Uh, I'm a contributor for the 4th and John uh, website, and you can go on there and read what I've got to say. I mean, even before the season started, me and Gail, we did a few videos on YouTube. Check us out here. And uh, that's all I've got to say. So, And you can find me at Eagle Sessions, and uh, we are 4thandjohn.com. Uh, and here's to getting that big dub. That's right. Fly, Eagles, fly. There you go.